welcome to this video. In this video we're going to talk about one of my favourite topics from set theory, and that is the proof that the cardinality of the power set is always going to be greater than the cardinality of the original set. So let's start off with a bit of notation then. So we'll call our set um, x, and we will use the notation p of x for the power set of x. And hopefully you're aware of the definition of the power set of x. So it is the set of all subsets of the set x. So here is our set x, it will contain a bunch of elements. If you can imagine all the possible subsets that you can construct of the set x, including the empty set and the full set itself, and you put all of those subsets into a set, and that is what is meant by the power set of x. Now, what we want to prove in this video then is that the cardinality, or if you like, the size of the power set is always going to be greater than the cardinality of the original set itself. Now this is very simple for uh, the empty set and for finite sets. What the focus of this video is really going to be on is infinite sets and proving that the cardinality of the power set of an infinite set is still always going to be greater than the cardinality of the original set. However, let's go through the full thing. So let's start off with the um, simplest case, which is what if x is equal to, and red is not a good colour, it's not showing up well at all, we'll go back to white. Um, so what if our set x is equal to the empty set, so the set that contains nothing at all? Well, in that case, the cardinality of x, the cardinality of the empty set is equal to zero, there's nothing in it. What is the cardinality of the power set of x? Well, there is only one subset of the empty set, and that is the empty set itself. So the power set of the empty set is going to be the set that contains the empty set. And therefore, the cardinality of that set is going to be equal to 1 in that case, because there is actually one element in that set, and that is the empty set. The empty set, this is an element of this larger set, and therefore there is one element in that set. So in that case, uh, you can see that the cardinality is greater than the cardinality of the original set. So we've done it for the empty set. Now let's take a finite set. Let's try and get a bit of colour on here. So um, what colour will show up well? Actually, I don't think any colour really shows up as well as white, so we'll stick with white. And let's now take x is equal to some finite set, so it contains the elements x1, x2, all the way up, let's say, to little xn. So there are its finite number of elements. So how can we prove then that the cardinality of its power set is always going to be greater than the cardinality of the original set? Well, think about the power set. The power set is at the very least going to contain all of the singleton sets. So if we draw a bit of it out here, it's going to contain the subset that just contains the element x1, it's going to contain the subset that just contains element x2, etc. It's going to contain all of these singleton sets, all the way up to, it's going to contain the subset that contains just xn. And then it's going to contain a lot more than just those singleton sets. It's going to contain all the sets that just contain one element, so it's going to contain the set x1, x2. It's going to contain the subset x1, x3, etc. So it's going to contain a whole bunch more subsets, but at the very least it's going to contain the singleton um, sets there. So we could set up a bijective mapping from each of the elements of our original set to their respective singleton sets. And that would be, oh sorry, not a bijective bi mapping. It would be a bijective mapping onto that subset of the power set that just contains the singleton sets. But we can set up an injective mapping from all the elements of our set X onto the singleton sets within the power set. And then there are loads of elements outside of the range of that mapping. So this is not a subjective mapping. And in finite set theory, the existence of an injective mapping that is not subjective then proves that um, the codomain, um, the set that you're mapping onto, is bigger, has a greater cardinality than the uh, set that you came from. And you might think that that is completely overwording for something that is trivially obvious. It's trivially obvious that um, this one is smaller than this one. However, this wording it up fancier actually is going to help us when we go on to infinite set theory. 
So remember this, that in finite set theory, the existence of an injective mapping that is not onto, it's not subjective, disproves the existence of a bijective mapping. The existence of this mapping that we've come here means that you will never be able to find me a mapping from this set to this set that is bijective, i.e. is one-to-one -one and onto. Whereas in infinite set theory, the existence of an injective mapping that is not subjective does not disprove the existence of a bijective mapping, and that's really, really crucial. Um, so here we have evidently proven then that the uh, cardinality of the power set is going to be greater than the cardinality of the original set. So let's now go on to infinite sets. So we're now going to imagine then that x is an infinite set, and we're not going to specify whether it's countable or uncountable, it's just going to be an infinite set, because this proof is going to work whether our infinite set is countable or uncountable. Um, so x is an infinite set now, and just excuse me, there's an alarm going off, and I just want to shut my window because it's distracting me. Someone's car alarm. Um, right. So we were saying then now that x is an infinite set, and we want to prove still that the cardinality of the power set is going to be greater than the cardinality of the original set. And in fact, I think I'll take a break because the closing of the window still hasn't managed to shut it out. So we'll cut the video here, and in the next video we'll continue this proof once the alarm has stopped.